Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat. Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantakreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Al Daat Jehova, El Emuna Jehova. E Basilian Kurios, O Tios, O Pantacreta Basilios Basilian, Kai Kurios, Kurion Yehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal Yehova Gadol, Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol, Gebura Derek Emuna Bakar, Mishfat Shaba the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself of truth unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkano to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding why God created man. Realizing the duty of man and the purpose for which he has kept us alive. Making our every breath to the praise of his glory. Using his grace to the effectual working of his honor on this earth. Realizing these things in this life and making our life to be number one to the Lord's greatest desire to be fulfilled in our lives is the sole purpose for which cause we come to worship our Lord our God, to behold His beauty and to inquire much about Him in His temple. Understanding these things, using the privacy of our priesthood and making up our lives to learn the mind of Christ, we shall continue after this prayer using the prayers of your priesthood wherewith God the Father teaches to us that in Galatians 1.5 He extricated us by force He tore us out from the present evil world according to the Thelema will of God the Father so that we could be now the children of light, walking and performing the duty of Christ. So realizing these things, using the privacy of our priesthood, we shall continue after this prayer through confession of our sins in rebound. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the unique and great pale wonders of this word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to learn the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by the message which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 3, particularly beginning with verse 11, he says that, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
the eternal purpose so that in the present time every believer could realize that he has been made to whom the word of Lord God comes as God to this perishing and unbelieving world. And as we come along to learn and to graduate in the word of God, the very word what you speak, the very truth what you communicate, particularly you are the way showing men to others. As in Acts chapter 10 in verse 6, the house of Cornelius was told, Simon the Peter, what he teaches to you or what he tells to you, that is what it is binding upon you and you have to do it. And every believer has to wake up to the fact we are the way showing men. We are the light as Christ our Lord our God was light of the world. And if we don't shine in this light and if we become idle as we read yesterday in Numbers 9.13. First of all, he is not defiled. He is clean. He is not into a faraway journey, the second standard strategy. And yet, this man is idle. And in his appointed time, what the approach present or what it has to be to the Lord God through your lives, looking upon the time, growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, conforming to his will, what you ought to be, and what you haven't yet given to the Lord. That's what we read. Approach present in the appointed time. Our lives have to be a living sacrifice to God the Father in this appointed time. And we read yesterday as well. When we have been given such light and called to be the salt of this earth, we are just wasting our valuable grace by not becoming what God the Father intends us to be about the Sar Salish, what we read yesterday from Second Chronicles 8-9. A man on the earth like King Solomon appoints to be in his section or in his batch or in his kingdom people who are men of war, the first one, who are chief of the captains, the second category and captains over the horses and the chariots. And there we found the same word, not as been found here for Salish in captains, or to be the chief of the captains. The chief is called as Sar, and the captains is Salish. There we know that Salish are the category of the people who are threefold above the measure of ordinary men. Threefold. And according to the eternal purpose, what Lord God the Father intends to the church is that every believer has to be something far higher, far greater, and the standards of threefold what he intends us. Every believer. It is not just some who could reach that standards of threefold as we have been reading in First Kings chapter 7 as well why he has kept the threefold light or the three ranks which has to be reached in the level of lights. But far above than that, we have to be in the church age greater than this Sar Salish. And we have to reach that since there are many people who haven't reached that status quo of Sar Salish or far I above than Sar Salish. In Psalm 119, we read in verse 158, I beheld the transgressors. The word beheld is I inspect, I perceive. Do you know who are these transgressors? The Hebrew word calls as Bagath, who act faithlessly and who deal deceitfully and who offend the will of God. And these are accounted to be unfaithful men. And if you are not growing up to become Sar Salish by reaching your three level ranks or
the three level ranks of the light mentioned for us you will be accounted as bagad unfaithful man doing not the will of god the father seeking not the mind of christ and when we beheld such men you know what happens we grave the word says for us loathsome felt to be detested and this loathsome because they kept not thy word the word kept again our old friend called as shamer to guard and to absorb and to give a very good heed for what he says they haven't kept thy word imra the word of god or torah the speech or the utterance of him therefore he says for us in numbers 9:13 the man that is clean the word man is ish who have been not adama or enosh but he is now in the structure of god what he is he is tahor tehor conditions believing in christ once and for all you have been cleansed so that you don't have any relationship with the world but rather walking in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit as a man approved unto god putting to death the old sin nature and its activities you have to walk in the spirit that's what it is called as clean tahor tohor conditions and that's what instantly at the moment of salvation when you believe in christ you have been cleansed forever because of the righteousness of lord god the father is been imputed to you and since you have the righteousness of lord god the father there is no way that we can call you unclean but your activities on this earth making the flesh to reign over your spirit walking according to the cosmos diabolicus seeking not things those which are above but always seeking those things on this earth will make you to become unclean on this earth you know how to illustrate this if you are having human excreta upon your clothes or in your body would you think that it is a great sign of a smell and would you continue a journey in that the people around you will run away because of your activities and your smell and your clothes the way how they are been in excreta and do you think you can keep that or bear that with you until and unless you are a lunatic or until and unless you are been out of your senses that's what the word of god says in second timothy 1:7 for us he has given us a sound mind the word sound mind for onismas getting back to your senses what you have lost that's what the word for us over there in second timothy chapter 1 in verse number 7 when we read that word sound mind which is called for us in the greek sophronismas and that is nothing but for you all a great admonition to restore one back to his senses because that is called as sophronizo until unless you are a lunatic or a man out of senses you will be carrying in your flesh that human excreta spilled over or scattered over upon your clothes and upon the way you are if you are a normal man what do you do if you are a man in senses like the way in mark 5 we look upon a demon possessed man when he came back to his senses you know that very great chapter in mark 5 when the people thought that this man was not worth but yet god the father thought when he was been cleansed from his demon possession activities we look that man came back to his senses In verse sixteen of Mark five, we read, "They that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and concerning the swine." It is in verse fifteen, not sixteen. He says, "And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed, and 
his right mind again the word very close to next called as sophronismo so here we have sophronio that meant to say to be of a sound mind to come back to one's right mind the two greek words match over here it is the code number for double line three and over here in sound mind it is 4995 and the origin of the word comes from 4994 that is called as sophronizo in mark 515 it is called as sophronio that's the difference 4993 and this is 4994 and the word here for us in 2 Timothy 1 7 is Sophronismos. God the Father has given to us, he says, in 2 Timothy 1 7, not a spirit of fear, but of power, dunamai, and copulative conjunction chi called as this. 2532 code followed by love that is power dunamis and then agape love again copulative conjunction chi followed by sound mind which is called as sophronismos or to get back or to make others to recollect their senses until unless you recollect your sense first and get back to the will of god the father there can never be a place or a chance or a time for you to make others to recollect their senses. Then how do you recollect now your senses if the human excreta is being scattered all over your flesh and upon your clothes? What do you do the first thing if ever you get the smell of human excreta upon you? You just go run and wash it off. And then you take a bath. And then you apply some scent so that it could not smell or smell of that could not be coming to others isn't it if a man who is in senses will do that but they that have not guarded the word of god it meant to say they are out of their sense they are not of a right mind they are into this legion kind of demons activating in them the word demons over there meant to say their lustful patterns of the old sin nature which lead them to have lust of flesh, lust of eye and the pride of life. These three things they have for sure. Therefore they constantly mind earthly things. They do not realize that they have been cleansed by the power of God at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. They do not realize that they have been inculcated with the righteousness of my Christ forever on them. Therefore, they are no longer into the world. They have the sperm of Christ and they need to produce the character of Christ in them, conforming to the image of his glory. And since these people have forgot that they have been cleansed, that they have been made whole again in the sight of God, they are out of their senses. They forgot and they are out of their senses. Therefore, they still go back once again as a dog which eats its own vomit and as a pig which goes on or a swine which goes on to have to make itself dirt in the same dirt place from where it came back. And since these are the men who are not in the senses, They think they are really the slaves of Christ. If you are really the slave of Christ, thinking that you are in your sense of this sound mind followed by agape or copulated by agape and dunamis power, then your light should shine forth, as he says in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1, 2, and 3. Gentiles should come to look upon your light. The king shall come to look upon the light which has been absolutely shining from your life. That's what the word Zarak, we read that. In Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1, 2 and 3. And the way you fail to be shining in this light, it clearly meant that you haven't washed your excreta. Though you smell, you walk, and you come to the church and think that you are really great to the service of God. 
But the people who are not having sense because they are also upon human excreta, they think what you are doing and what I am doing is the same because you have in you excreta, I have in me excreta. So let's follow the traditions of men and forget what the Bible teaches clearly. People are not able to let go their egos. People are not able to search and understand that already this man has excreta. Even am I sharing that excreta? If I am not smelling his excreta, that meant to say even I am also in excreta. And God the Father doesn't want his people to be in the standards out of senses. He wants to be aware, he wants to be alert, he wants to take it, he wants to continue till the end with great care of his salvation and protect Lord God the Holy Spirit in us, which has been given and told not to grieve, not to squelch, not to wax, not to lie, not to resist, but rather be controlled of Lord God the Holy Spirit. If ever you live, you walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. If ever you walk, you have to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And he claims that if you are in the quickening spirit, then you are are no longer the living soul but rather you would become the will of God to these people in everything what we need to look not our will O Lord but only thy will and it's God the Father who has to constantly guide us and lead us how we can be guided by the law divine guidance how it is through the word of God being taught by the bona fide gifted pastor teacher who is a male believer wherewith he learns and he teaches the things pertaining to dispensations exegesis isagogics and categories word by word line by line and letting not go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera but rather rightly dividing the word of truth teaching to you the mind of Christ and he cannot teach to you what he hasn't learned. And today the pulpits are being jammed up. You know, the people are interested to look what will happen in the book of Revolution. All over the globe, the people are interested to consider what will be the end things. And they're so happy to look what is this book. So they're happy so that they could understand where they stand. You know what, dear brethren? Before he could look into the book of Revolution, consider the four times when the word of Lord God says, Lord, Lord, in the book of Matthew twice, in the book of Luke twice. In the book of Luke chapter 6, he said, You call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things what I command you to do. The first time you call Lord, Lord. Again in Luke chapter 13, he says for us, saying that, In your presence we ate and drank, O Lord. In your presence we did great many things. And do you know what does he claim? They claim that, we heard your word in the streets and you think that was a great point for us the word of Lord God has to be taught in the churches not in the streets the church is where now the polypiclos wisdom of Christ has to be communicated in Matthew chapter 7 we look when they claim Lord in thy name we did great wonders in thy name we did this we did that and you know what God the Father says Workers of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you because you haven't executed the thelema will of God the Father. And men like excreta mind will club together as a blind leads another blind and both of them will end up in ditch. And the people who haven't learned what is the seriousness in the mystery doctrine of the church is given to be communicated to these people who are perishing without knowing the purpose of life. And that's the reason why we are still not going to make disciples of all the nations because you haven't become a disciple or grown up as a disciple, joining, grown up as a grammatius, joining as a disciple unto the Lord. You have lost your focus because you have not understood that this world is like human excreta upon you. The sooner the better you go out and wash yourself and come back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Bath has been made for you. Now you go and wash, said the Lord of our God, even to Peter. Bath is only once in John chapter 13. And then what? You have to wash, wash, wash. Every day you need to wash with the water of the word of God, with the water of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer, and if you are not yet a believer, water represents the gospel for you. And depending upon that gospel, the second one will be always washing in the word of God, in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
But you know how awkward we look. You're smelling and your fellow slave is not able to look your smell because he is also in the same standards of that smelling. But you know, on the times of gossip, mental attitude, sins, this is what the way how they talk about others, backbiting, judging, thinking in the attitude of holier than thou. You know what they do? They can easily smell the faults of others. Therefore, in Second Peter chapter 1, he says, How would you be in brotherly kindness? The seventh step formula of what he calculates in Second Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse number 5, because he says we all share the divine nature of Lord God. He teaches that we are the partakers of his divine nature by the great and exceedingly precious promises given to us. And as he teaches them to us, he understands that the formula is first beginning with virtue you have to attain. And the church age is called for us to be in the standards of virtue. And you think, does he stop there? No, he goes on to teach for us in verse number 5 that besides this, give all diligence add to your faith virtue what is that faith pistis doctrine what you need to add he claims to add virtue the word virtue is aretas the things which are absolutely excellent and purity and then he claims that virtue how with knowledge and the word over here for us is gnosis and it becomes epinosis when you believe that and you apply in your life and walk in that way. If you don't know gnosis, you cannot become epinosis to the Lord. And to the knowledge he claims at temperance, why this akratia that is called a self-control, why it has been needed. The one who has mastered his desires and passions in every mannerism of his sensual appetites. The word calls for a self-control. And what is that he says? This self-control. Because to learn knowledge, self-control is needed to have a control over all the passions, over all the appetites, including whatever it could be. Your sexual lust, power lust, material lust. These things are not important for us. First, our first goal and the primary work we are kept alive is to produce production to the Lord. That's what we read in Malachi 1.6. And there the prophets will come and ask, what is that you have despised? Or what is that we have despised you unto you, O Lord? He says that you are offering me polluted bread. You are offering me such kind of a blame animals. Go and give this to your pasha. He would right royally cut off your ears. But you think God the Father, who is a great God, who is a great king, who is king of kings and lord of lords, you can offer him the standards of this polluted brides or living brides rather than unliving bride representing my Christ. The same thing, why? There is no production because no knowledge. As long as you fail to have knowledge, there will be no production. How you can get knowledge without you have self-control? A control of our oral appetites. The number one priority, what is needed? Relationship with Lord God. You cannot represent Lord God without having that relationship with my Christ. And how you represent him until unless you have knowledge of him. And that relationship counts for us, for production. Why you have been kept alive? The greatest virtue is to learn the knowledge of Bible doctrine on this earth. The sole purpose why we have been kept alive, why we have been taught so many things, so that you hear and obey and perform this, and you can live long days on this life, said long back in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses was proclaiming them to the people of Israelites. But when it comes now to the church age, it is not just that scale, it is only a part. We have something more. Join as disciples, grow up as grammatias, and your duty is to go and make disciples of all the nations. It's not just you live a long life.
It is a life to accomplish the work of God as Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, shows forth for us. Your work I finished, O Lord. I came to do the will of God the Father and I will perform it, he said in John 4, 34. And he said, Tetelestai, it is finished into thy hands. I dismiss my spirit because there is nothing left for me to do on this earth to save the sinful mankind according to your eternal purpose which you have planned. And he writes the same thing in Ephesians 3, 11 for us. So that right now by the church, when the manifold wisdom of Lord God has been taught, every believer should be rooted and grounded in the love of God in the doctrine of Christ producing in his inner man the strength wherewith he could reign in this angelic conflict to the highest as kinekatesis that never existed earlier as plural of Baltimore privileges that these people haven't known and why you're not able to acquire the knowledge because you don't have self-control Many of the lives today are destroyed, not having control over their lusts. Self-control, the man who has mastered all his appetites. Temperance is the word, akratias. And when you have that temperance or self-control, he says you have to have a lot of patience. Hupomeno, that is called as endurance. To be under the greatest trials or everything, carry the same burden of the Lord, carry the yoke of the Lord God every day. Don't worry about others, what they think, don't worry about others, what they might plan. Your right, fightful, bona fide duty is to just be endurance, endurance, endurance. Today you are alive today. Be careful to be thankful to the Lord so that you shall not fall into the traps of Satan and waste the grace of God of this day, but rather in much endurance, looking upon Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, what work he has kept us alive. Go on and produce it to the core to complete it. That's endurance. Be very, very wise because... Through the commandments of the word of Lord God, we become wiser than our enemies. He states in Psalm 119 verses 98. By becoming wise than our enemies, we have something to learn what it is. Our primary work is to conform to the image of Christ. Apart from that, whatever you do on this earth... Not reaching the full measure stature of the thinking of Christ, though you have been rendered fit and qualified... Apart from that, whatever you do, just vague and vain it is. It is not matching the will of God. Therefore, you claim tomorrow, Lord, Lord. And Lord God says, though you might have prophesied in my name, though you might have done great wonders and signs in my name. He claims, I never knew you. Workers of iniquity, just depart from me. And in other word over there, homo logio, he says that I confess you to the fact and to accord with the truth, and I don't match you what you are, who you are. He says, I never knew you. And you claim tomorrow, God Lord, saying, Lord, 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 Lord. Don't worry, dear brother. Endurance, or your words, patience, hupomeno in the Greek. Why this patience has been needed so that you can have self-control? Why that self-control is needed so that you can gain knowledge? Why that knowledge is given so that you could become a man of Gabor? We read that in the sevenfold spirit of Isaiah 11. The first one beginning with the fear, the second one the knowledge, the third one is Gabor. And when you are becoming Gabor, you need to look what is the counsel of the Lord God. When you look upon what is the counsel of the Lord God, you will have understanding. And that Bina will make you to realize that what you are and what you aren't in the word of God. And when you are in the word of God and doing the will of God, it gives you wisdom. And it makes you to count all the days of your life to the praise of his glory. And you will be like Psalms 27, 1, what we read yesterday. Lord God the Father is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord God the Father is everything unto me. Of whom shall I be afraid on this earth? And it is his constant light that guides us. It is his constant work that leads us. You know, the thing that drive Lord God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, setting forth a pattern for a man, how he has to walk. You know, in simple words to teach you, in Job 18, verses 21, we read, this will be the fate of the people who haven't known God. The word God over there is L, 410. 
And there we look. If every believer doesn't realize the pattern set forth for us as Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, was being told the time to say he is the light of the world. He is the way, the truth and the life and showing forth a pattern for us how we have to walk to be the way, the truth and the life to this people and to be the light and salt of this word. There we read the word for light as good as to be the divine orientation of truth. And to them the light has come. He claims that you are gods now or the word of God which came to you now you are gods to this people. And in Job 18.21 we read if you don't realize what that you are a God to these people then your life will be ended up like a wicked one starting with verse 5 until verse number 18 he gives a greater discourse that your light has not shined your light will be shunned off and this is what will happen if you don't have patience, if you don't have your will to realize what is the will that is matching Bible or not. Because in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, he says that you haven't done the will of God the Father. That's very simple as that. You haven't done what is the will of God the Father. And as long as you fail to do the will of God the Father, the will, whatever you may think you're doing as per this Bible, because you don't look what is the will of God the Father in exegesis, but you love to look what is the things that have been performed for you as unbelieving priests performed in the time of Malachi. Offering polluted brides, how you could offer to the Lord God that which is not acceptable. You think your praise or your work or your prayer or your meditation is acceptable to the Lord if you are not a believer. If you are an unbeliever, it is no way accepted. But these people are unbelieving priests and they offer polluted brides. How could a believing priest can offer polluted bride to the Lord? If you belong to God, if you belong to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no way you can offer polluted bread. You know the rituals, you know the things that have been given to you, what it has to be offered. And since you aren't born again, you know very well you are offering polluted ones to the Lord. Your life is also polluting, the, your life is also offering polluted ones to the Lord. If not, you would seek and search. What are the right commands? What are the right demands? They would ask God the Father to send shepherds after his own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. But you haven't loved what the Bible demands. You haven't understood what the word of Lord God wants for you to look. And as you fail, what happens, dear brethren? You also offer polluted ones to my Christ. Why? Because you don't have patience to look every day the word of God. You don't have that self-control over your lusts appetites. By the patience is required so that, for example, we preach every day one hour. You have that patience to listen. You have only patience for two or three minutes. Some people will not even listen for seconds. We can count them within one minute. Don't problem, dear brother. When you fail to have patience, you will fail to look tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ. What do you think after the end of your journey on this life you go? You need to go and meet your creator, isn't it? What do you will answer him? Though he has given us this great spirit of power to understand the sevenfold ministry and execute the will of God the Father, what you will answer him, what time you spent, how much you enjoyed the world and the things in the world, then how much you have enjoyed the word of God and executed your life according to the will of God. What you will answer tomorrow? And that time he will say, I couldn't have enough time for your word. Do you think your excuses will be forgiven? He never gave any excuses over there. He said, the foolish woman, they left the oil in the lamp and they what? And the time of the one who is coming, he comes there. And then they claim to the wise woman, give us your oil. Give us your experience. Give us your holiness. Can you give? What you can give by virtue of your parent, you can get your inheritance. The property could be transformed. But do you think you can get his holiness? 
as the way of Samuel, the way the children, they got the holiness, do not they claim in First Samuel 8, 5, saying that your children do not walk according to your ways. Or as you walked, they don't walk, so we want a king, they claimed. And over here, the foolish virgins, they go and claim to the wise woman saying that, or wise virgin saying that, give us your oil. Do you think they can give their oil to you? They cannot, dear brother. The same thing with Noah, Job and Daniel, we read that. They themselves can be said, but not their wife or children. Because of their righteousness. Now we have to be because of our holiness. These foolish ones, they go and ask the wise ones, give us your oil. They cannot give that oil. And what you did on this life on this earth at the time? You searched stupid things. You gave priority for silly things. The things which vanish off, and he says in 1 John 2, 15 through 17. But the one who does the will of Lord God the Father, that alone abideth, he teaches again in 1 John 2, 17. But you don't put it in your mind. Don't worry. Go on. Don't have patience. You may be thinking, who is having time for us? to look such discourses. If you don't have time now to pay back to the Lord God every day that which is due unto his account in the grace and the glory given upon you, at eternity you will never have time to look what you have lost forever. What you would have been given if you would have overcome as you read in second and third chapter of book of Revolution. The one he overcomes, I will make such and such. The one who overcomes, I will make him to sit in my throne. The one who overcomes, I will write a new name upon the plate. The one who overcomes, he says for us, that he is going to make him to be the pillar in the temple of my God. The one who overcomes, you know what all it teaches to us. And he says, he who has in here, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. But have you overcome? You haven't overcome to walk in the three scales of your ranks of your light. You haven't even overcome to look that the light is coming to the world. The darkness is not able to comprehend or receive that light. Your lives are also thinking you have received that light by paying tithes, by paying your time to the church weekly months. You are making yourself a great loss, deceiving your own self. You are making your life to be digged your own pits. And Satan is sponsoring your ignorance and arrogance. And Satan is always sponsoring them because they love not to worship the Lord in truth. Satan cannot abide in truth. That's as simple as that. Satan will not abide in truth, therefore he doesn't want you all to abide in truth. It will give you gimmicks. It will give you every mannerism of tricks. It will make you not to be a disciple or grown-up grammatias, but it will make you to become a conventional Christian attending the church weekly months. Your serious business tomorrow after you die, where do you go, dear brother? You go to God the Father if you are a believer. If you are not a believer, you go to hell. That's it. That's very simple because we find John 3.18 clearly teaching to us that the wrath of Lord God abideth upon them that they haven't believed because already has passed judgment on them. But those who believe, they are saved. No judgment upon them. And therefore we find in Romans 8.1, therefore there is no condemnation upon them who believe in Christ. Therefore they cry out, Abba, Father, in the Spirit given to them, because the Spirit beareth with it witness with our spirit that we are the technon children of God. And we have to grow up to become the adult sons of Christ. To the eternal purpose, the manifold wisdom of God to be taught now to the principles, the powers, the rulers, and the authorities in the heavenly places. So they like these foolish virgins you may claim tomorrow when you go to stand before the presence of the Lord. 
and asking to give oil. Your holiness is the time now, if you are alive, to put it on to the highest match of the third level of rank in light. Whenever you walk, one step at a time, remember there will be three paces in that. Whenever you remember that three, remember, we have to pass the examination of this three tests given for us, the threefold, the three excellent things earlier than that we read in Proverbs 20 to 20. The number three, you know what happens if you don't follow to become the will of God into the holy of the holiness of God. As Lord our God said to Peter, before the cock could cry thrice, you will reject me. You know, thrice Paul sought the Lord to remove the thorn in his flesh, but he said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. It could make you to be strengthened in weakness. And over here we look three times Balaam was hired or Balaam was told to curse Balaam Balak incident. But he couldn't. Three times he prophesied and he blessed them. Why this number three for us? Because God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit for His Holiness. And even we, we have to wake up because we have in us the three things. First master of the flesh, then your soul and then your spirit. And complete care and control in the hands of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we have been kept trichotomous after believing in Christ. The threefold work. And this threefold is very important for us. Even in Second Kings chapter 13 we read. When he was told, hit the arrow to the soil. And that king hit thrice and he stopped. And you know the wrath of the Elisha prophet comes upon them and he says, Why did you stop? You would have gone to hit it five or six times. And over here we are not able to reach the three levels of light of the ranks. Far less we could reach the fifth or sixth level what Elisha is demanding there. And what does it say there? If you would have hit five or six times forever, the enemy wouldn't have come upon you. But he stopped for three times. So you'll have peace for these three years and then later on again you will have troubles. And what are you placing in your life? You think the three levels of light is enough or you want to go more? You want to come back and walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. As we read that yesterday in Isaiah, in Psalms 43.3, send out your light. Do you think Lord God the Father hasn't sent his light yet for us? Already he has sent his light. The word of Lord God is our light. The word of Lord God is the truth. The word of Lord God is for our every pace of walk we walk. When you keep one step, the second step, you find a gap in between. It shows that the first step is the first pace. The second, the gap is the second pace. And the third and the step what you keep your right foot, when you keep first your left, then the, the right foot is the third pace. So he, see, he teaches to us the three paces what you walk. Always remembering you're making in your mind to realize that three is more important and that three is nothing but to begin to grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat. That three is more important to reach the perfection in the holiness of God, to be called in the presence of God the Father through our lives as Holy One, Holy One, Holy One, all the days of our thinking to become as Holy One as He is. Every time you walk, it has been reminding you the three steps. Will you reject like the way how Peter rejected the Lord? Or will you stop just as the king who stopped to hit his arrow thrice? Or you want to ascend more? Reaching three paces will make you to understand the burden of grown-up grammatias in the church. We have been called to really wake up to this calling. To cleanse out your excreta. The people around you don't smell your excreta because they are also in excreta. But they would love to smell the mental attitude sins of others and they would come out from such sins. Why can't they smell the human excreta that you are still in the world? And doesn't the word of Lord God says not have fellowship 
What fellowship you can have between light and darkness? What fellowship you can have between the temple of Bilal and the temple of Christ? We are the children of light. We are the children of righteousness. So we need to walk in the path of righteousness. Doesn't he teach for us, resist the devil? Not have fellowship with the deeds of darkness. How much of the time we look in Romans chapter 6 as well, when you're grown up into baptism, earlier you used the instruments for your of your flesh to death, but now use your instruments for the holiness of Christ and have a reward of Him. How much of the information we have been said? And that information should be counted because we are now the kinekatesis in the church. And how we acquire that information? If you have patience, you can acquire it. That patience which leads to you to self-control. And that self-control will make you to understand that the main purpose of our life is to acquire the Word of God. Without this Word of God, we cannot. So he says, to knowledge, temperance, that is self-control. How you get self-control? Because you need to acquire knowledge, no matter what it would cost. The number one priority for your life on this earth is to acquire Bible doctrine, no matter what it would cost. Because thy word, he said in Psalms 119 and 105, thy word, O Lord, is for me everything. And that is what he says, the light and the lamp. And that's what we need to look again. He says for us in 105 that thy word is a lamp unto my feet. We read the word lamp. Lamp is nothing but for us as the light which could be used. And this light is nothing but which has been broken up or plowed or tilted like a fire. That's what the word light over here is. The word lamp is not light, nay air. The word lamp, ne air, meant to say for us that it has been originated, number one, from niyar, that is called as the one which has been broken up or freshly, which has been tilted like the soil. And then the second word we find, it is in the standards of nur, nur meant to say fire. So, lamp is nothing but you are now a tilted or a Cloud fire like the way you break up your fallow grounds. So he says for us, thy word is a fire or a lamp unto my feet. Do you know what is that feet? We read that word regal, that meant to say three times. When you pass your light three times. And therefore we learn saying that a light unto my path. What is that light? The light of life, the light of lamp, the light of prosperity, or a light. The light of Yehovah, Lord our God, shining upon your face. And what is that he calls the word path? The word path meant to say, Nati'ib. And the word Nati'ib meant to say, which you trodden with your feet. And this is what it is lacking today in our pulpits. You are not walking to acquire the word of God as number one priority because that knowledge or the mind of Christ is what you need to trod in under your feet. If you are keeping your feet away, just remember, have you have the knowledge of God to walk? Therefore, we find for us the shoes of your gospel that is what shot your feet. And how blessed are they that go to teach the gospel, he said. And doesn't we read in Ephesians 6, the same entire armor of God, first your feet to be with the standards of the gospel, first your lions to be gridded with the truth, and then coming to your feet, the gospel. The same thing over here. If you're not having your gospel in your mind or your work to do the will of God, better don't step outside. The paths what you're walking are waste. You are not walking the ways of God as Moses was being told. Take out your foot, that is what, take out your sandals of your foot. The place where you stand is a holy ground and the way where he is walking now. You know, God the Father did not invite him to come till Moses could see why it has not been consumed on that burning bush. Now how many great lessons we have to learn, how many things we need to mould, how many things we need to change. If you are walking outside, be remembering yourself, are you having the gospel of Christ? If not, don't walk. 
If not, don't come up. Better be inside of your home. Because the word of Lord God is such a fire which has to be ploughed or break up your fallow grounds and teach the truth. Such a great one it is for you. Such a great truth it is for you. And you are not walking in that fire of the word of God because you don't want to acquire knowledge under self-control with patience. Therefore you don't have this, you don't have brotherly kindness. You know, coming to before the brotherly kindness, he says for us, if you don't have patience and if you don't have temperance, if you don't look into the knowledge to get virtue and faith, he says that there is no godliness, you so beyond principle. And this is what we read in Acts chapter 10 concerning the word about Cornelius and his family. They were eusebians unto the Lord. And here they don't have that eusebian principle. And when they don't have this eusebian principle, there will be not brotherly kindness. The word brotherly kindness is a very word called as philas plus adelphas. The word Philadelphia, what you find. Philos meant to say the love. And then Adelphas meant to say the brethren together. When there is no brother, brotherly kindness, you will not have charity known to say agape love. You haven't met the demands of the word of God. And he says, for if these things be in you and abound, not just be, but abound, what the word abound meant to say, pleonazo, to superabound, to increase, to get argumented, and to make it to increase, increase, not just to have, but increase. He says, they make you, that is what katheistemi, to set you, kataplasistemi, that you shall neither, that is what, no chance that you will be barren, the word barren meant to say argos, and the word argos meant to say that free from labor, they will not make you to become a lazy one, shunning the labor which you ought to perform. Many of them, they have become barren, they think that they are sterile, they cannot have children. The word barren meant to say over here, argos, they are lazy, and the word meant to say they will never be lazy. They will not shun their labor which they ought to perform to Christ. If you are being not lazy or barren, by that we meant to say that you have to go in making disciples of all the nations. But you are lazy, but you are barren, but you are in the standards of Argos, shunning from the duty which you ought to perform to the Lord. But he says, if you have this and if you are bound in this, he says, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. The word called as akarpas, which meant to say not yielding what it ought to yield. Not yielding what it ought to yield. That is called as unfruitful for you. Argos and akapros. The duty which you ought to perform, you will not be far away. And the things what you ought to yield, that you will definitely yield. That you will not be far away from it. That's what he meant to say. How? Because you will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the word knowledge over here is not now called as gnosis, but it is said now epinosis, full knowledge. Full and accurate knowledge, 1 Timothy 2, 4, that none should perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge. The word over there is again epinosis. God the Father is not just the will of him that they should be saved. He wants them to come to the epinosis knowledge of his will. To be fulfilled in every member of the human race, not just believers. Therefore, he said, Go and make disciples of all the nations. But he says again the conjunction of contrast. He that lacketh the word, the one who lacketh in the sense, not even to the least point of this command to be fulfilled in his life, that is, these things is number one blind the word blind is nothing but two flowers he is mentally physically blind and what does he do he says that cannot see afar off that is what he cannot see what is his eternity later on deuteronomy 32 29 oh that they were wise they would consider the later on so he cannot see because he is blind and he hath forgotten the word forgetfulness 
followed by this lambano that meant to say he cannot seize and take it. He has forgotten to take it and gather every day the word of Lord God to be his life. He has forgotten from where he has been cleansed. And the word katharismos. He has been cleansed by the will of God in the righteousness of Christ. And he's been cleansed from where? From his old sins. The word old meant to say former, palai. Long ago, the word sins meant to say harmartia, to miss the mark. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling. Spaudiza, be sure. To make your calling, again, the word very, very important, classes, which is called for a divine invitation and election. Sure, that is what act like go, the act of Lord God's free will in choosing you to make it to be 100% baby or stable. Metaphorically used to be stabling. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And then he says, For so an infant shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. And that's what he says, Though you know them, yet I will teach you these things, because he wants the things pertaining to the word of Lord God in constant guidance to your mind. And if you reject these things, dear brethren, if you reject to cleanse the excreta which is upon you in this world, you are not cleansed, you are not thoroughly purged, and you still continue to do that which is lies in this life. Dear brethren, time is short for us. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ. That's the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. Whereas for the believers, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season, not of season, because Dharma out my witnesses, where it have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in Willing Trinity, for the Bible in our hands and number to down out to my witnesses or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So, which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to constantly have patience and endurance and to learn thy knowledge and to expound thy truth. Because, Lord, every day it's your great day. It's not we depend upon your past experience or yesterday's events, O Lord, but we freshly come to take today's manna as well. Help us, Father, to attend thy word every day because you have designed for us one day at a time, one step at a time, in the paces of three straight, three threefold excellent things of your ministry so that we could always be faithful enough to do thy will by fulfilling the good pleasure of yours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. This section, Father, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, be gracious name, we praise our Lord. The Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenges by these words. Amen.